I bet there's a lot of you watching this right now that are wondering how the hell you start and run a business while actually maintaining your full-time job. And I know it sounds crazy when all these gurus are telling you to quit your job or that you have to quit your job in order to see success. Well, it's possible. Just take Gordon, for example, who does $40,000 a month in his cleaning business completely remotely, doing about 10 to 20 grand a month in profit while working a full-time job. And he only spends four to five hours a week. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the step-by-step -step guide on how you can start, grow, and scale a remote cleaning business while not having to sacrifice your remote Step number one, you're going to have to go through what I like to call the Rocky montage phase. You know when you watch a Rocky movie and he's doing the montage and he's training and he's working his ass off? Well, that's going to be you. because it is going to be a bit of a grind at the beginning because you're gonna have to get everything set up. And by the way, if you don't know how to set one of these up, we make tons of videos all about it. Just I'll link down below in the step-by-step -step guide on how to actually start one. But you're gonna have to set everything up and that's gonna take some time. You're gonna have to start answering the phone calls. You're gonna have to source and hire your own cleaners. You're gonna have to set up all your marketing channels. Then once all that's set up, you're gonna start taking phone calls. You're gonna start booking the jobs. You're gonna start communicating with the cleaners on where they need to go, right? Again, the list goes on. There's a lot that you're going to need to do to get this set up. And it's important for you to go through this phase because you need to get a good understanding of the day-to-day -day operations and the day-to-day -day systems that are going to go into your business. Because when we talk about hiring someone to do all this for you, you need to be documenting everything and know what a good sales call sounds like, know what a good cleaner interview sounds like, know what good expectations are to set with your customers, right? Now this can take a really long time or this can take a very short time. I've seen people go through this phase in two weeks and immediately start delegating and hiring people to do all that stuff. Or I've seen people take a couple months so they have really, really good written down SOPs, standard operating procedures. Because if you don't know how to do it, how do you expect to hire someone and train them how to do it if you don't know how to do it yourself? It's going to be the blind leading the blind and that's what you don't wanna do. You wanna create a business that runs without you. And a business that runs without you is inherently more valuable and is an actual asset because then someone can come buy it and you can take your chips off the table and get a you know a decent amount of cash for the business you build. But you're gonna wanna write a lot of this stuff down so when you do hire someone, you'll be able to pass it off and manage that much easier. So once you go through the rocky phase and that's all done and you're ready to hire and you feel like you've got some good systems that are, that are ready to go, you're gonna hire what's called a virtual assistant. A virtual assistant is an offshore employee, typically in the Philippines, and I've seen a lot of people sourcing some good ones from Pakistan lately. You're gonna pay them anywhere from four to seven dollars an hour before I get reamed in the comments about this. For them, that's great. The average nurse or teacher in the Philippines makes like four bucks an hour or three bucks an hour or something like that. So for them, it's really, really good pay. And why Philippines and Pakistan is because you can get more bang for your buck with the US dollar because it goes a lot farther in those countries. And two, they speak really, really good English. With some of them, you can't even tell you're speaking to an overseas employee. And because you're going to be paying your cleaners 50% of the job, you need to capture as much profit as possible and not spend so much on US-based labor to run the business. At the end of the day, it's a house cleaning business. It's not rocket science. You can get someone from one of these countries to easily run your whole entire company. And the way you're gonna hire one of these people, there's a few different options you can use when you're looking to hire a virtual assistant. Number one is an agency. There's a lot of recruitment agencies that specialize in recruiting from the Philippines, recruiting from Pakistan, but agencies are gonna be expensive. You expect to spend anywhere between $1,500 to $4,000 for one placement. But when you spend that money, as as, long as you pick a good agency, you can count that this person is going to come trained and they're going to do a good job vetting them for you so you don't have to do that yourself. Or you can go to things like onlinejobs.ph and start hiring and interviewing on your own. Now this is more so if you're on a shoestring budget, but also it will help you learn the skill of hiring and what to look for. And some things to look for is good clear communication and most importantly sales skills because this first virtual assistant you're going to hire is going to be a sales virtual assistant. They're going to be answering the phone calls, they're going to be following up with customers, they're going to be booking jobs, they're going to be overcoming objections on the phone. So you want to find someone who already has the skill of sales. It's gonna be that much easier, especially if you're starting and you don't have the skill of sales yet. Maybe that's not your expertise. Okay, now that you have your sales virtual assistant hired, you're gonna start managing and delegating and ramping them up. The ramp up is actually gonna come first because you need to kind of gradually train them up to where they know how to do everything, right? You're not gonna hire a virtual assistant and then expect them to run a whole business and you're just hands off completely. No, this takes time and you have to pour in and build this person up. Typically, this should take about one to two weeks. This is where you're gonna take half the calls and you're gonna have the VA take half the calls. And on those calls that they take, you're gonna do what's called QC, quality control control. You're going to listen to their call recordings. And ideally, you're going to give them a script prior to memorize so 
they know what to say when a prospect says whatever objection or says some trigger word. The virtual assistant needs to be trained to know how to handle that. And so you're gonna to listen to these calls and see how well they're following your script, right? And every day you should be meeting with them and saying, hey, I noticed you're saying this, stop saying this, instead say this, okay? Cool, work on that. Then listen to the calls again. You're gonna understand, okay, they fixed that. Now what's the next thing we can fix? Up until they get to a point where they're closing leads at about a 25 to 30%. Now we wanna be at 40 to 50% on these calls, but for now, 25 to 30 in the first two weeks is really, really good. And then after about one to two weeks of diligently doing quality control, doing your one-to-one -one meetings, giving them feedback, they should be ready to take a full day of calls, full week of calls, and really just be the person that the customer talks to when they call your business. And I can go a whole hell of a lot deeper on how to properly manage someone, specifically a sales VA, but I'll do you one better. I've included down in the description below a free training I did for our clients who do 30K plus per month. It's an exclusive training. I'll give it to you guys for free on how to properly manage and delegate your sales to a virtual assistant. So it's everything you need, including templates for end of day reports, the proper numbers you need to look at, your meeting cadence, what to look for, when to fire, all that stuff. It's in the doc below. So check that out below. Okay, so you're getting good at managing, you're getting good at delegating, this person's taking all the phone calls for you, you're not having to run out of your office to answer cleaning phone calls and get them booked, the VA is handling it all for you. The next step is you're going to do this until you're at about 30 to 40k a month and then you're going to need to make a second hire and the second hire is going to be what's called an operations virtual assistant. This person is going to be responsible for hiring the cleaners, managing the cleaners, handling any customer complaints, doing the customer satisfaction surveys and what this is going to do is this is going to take the other end of the business off your plate. This person is here to solve the other half of your headaches that isn't sales. And also it's going to take a lot more off your other VAs back because now they can focus on just revenue generating activities, answering phones, following up with leads, calling old customers to rebook them. You get the point. And then you're going to repeat the same process with this virtual assistant that you did with the sales virtual assistant, right? You're going to have your scripts, your templates on what they need to be saying, what they need to be doing, day-to-day -day tasks. And then you're going to do your quality control. You're going to ramp them up. You're going to have them sit on a cleaner interviews with you on Zoom. You're going to have them listen to how you handle customer complaints up until the point where you feel like they're good to go to handle that stuff. But again, you're going to follow the same process in the document. You're going to train, you're going to delegate, you're going to do quality control on their interviews, on their follow-up, on how they handle customer complaints. And once this person's ramped up, you're gonna have your operations VA handling one half, the, the customer service side of the business. You're gonna have your other VA handling all the sales and all the bookings. Then once you get to this point, you're probably doing 50 to $60,000 a month in revenue with around 20K a month in net profit while still holding a nine to five. Now, at that point, depending on how much you make, it might not be worth it to keep it, but if you really enjoy it, you can. But you also now have a skill set of building a cleaning business. And now you can turn this into a million dollar thing because if you're spending less time in the business, it gives you more time to work on the business. So now you can use all that freed up time to launch a new location, to test out new marketing channels, to generate more leads. I mean, you can sell the business now because it's actually valuable and it runs without you. There's a lot of different things you can do, but ultimately you now have a cash flowing asset that's better than any other cash flowing asset on the planet. You can go buy 30 rentals and you're, you're not going to get the same amount of cash flow. Just take Skylar Sullivan, for example, who runs a Nebraska location and just launched a Texas location, does about $60,000 a month and pulls well over 10K a month dividends on top of his nine to five. The guy's totally crushing it. I give you two examples now of this being possible. You just have to go out and do the work. At the end of the day, this is house cleaning, guys. It's not rocket science, like I said earlier. Anybody can do it. It just takes a little bit of elbow grease. If you want to know exactly how to do it, we've helped a thousand people do this exact process, over a thousand people. And we have a whole free training we put together on what it looks like to actually work with me and my team. And if you click the link down below, about a seven minute video, check it out, book a call with one of our consultants where you can get a little bit of a deeper dive, answer some more questions that you might have after watching this video. And if you wanna work with us, great. Let's make some freaking money. If not, my feelings won't be hurt. But if you haven't liked this video, you haven't subscribed and you got value out of it, my feelings are gonna be hurt. So hit subscribe, hit the like if you got some value. We'll see you in the next one.